Hi, my name is Grace. I'm a business major and for my project I will be exploring love, sex, and romance in Christianity. I chose this topic because I myself am a Christian and it's a very controversial topic in today's society so I thought it would be a very interesting topic to do. The way that love, sex, and romance is discussed in the Bible connects to a much broader social relevance because it both agrees and disagrees with cultural norms today. The way that it agrees with cultural norms is when we look at that domestic public dichotomy. So the way that the Bible discusses gender uses the domestic public dichotomy as a framework, drawing off of humans' innate biological differences between a man and a woman. The way that the Bible references the parties involved in a romantic relationship is always using the phrases such as man and woman, husband and wife, mother and father. It's always a man and a woman. Christianity clearly believes that heterosexuality is not only expected, but required. In heteroromantic love and heterosexiness in children's G-rated films, the authors Karen Martin and Emily Kaz Yak state that heteronormativity is prevalent in children's movies, and it teaches that heterosexuality is expected in society. So the Bible is only agreeing with this article. Christianity is very firm in this belief to the point that in Leviticus 20.13 it states, If a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood is upon them. Wow. From a Christian perspective, homosexuality is absolutely frowned upon. And in the book titled Between a Man and a Woman, Why Conservatives Oppose Same-Sex Marriage, the author Ludger V. Hughes Bailey notes the associations with homosexuality include disease, addiction, lack of freedom, aggression, unfettered sexuality, risky business, impurity, and heterosexuality is associated with health, freedom, peacefulness, ordered sexuality, childlike helplessness and purity, American family, and Christianity. So as you can see, there are a lot of negative associations from the Christian perspective with homosexuality. And that has a lot to do with the innate biological differences between man and woman. And it's interesting to think about how all these beliefs are ingrained in children's G-rated movies as well. Because when I think back to my childhood watching princess movies, and it was always a man and a woman. I think it's fair to say that Christianity agrees with cultural norms and the way that it reaffirms heteronormativity and almost celebrates it. And this heteronormativity is not only found in children's G-rated movies and not just in the Bible, but also in romance novels. I've seen that a lot. In the article For the Sake of Hearth and Home, Gender Schematity in the Romance Novel, the authors Marla Coleman and Samantha Simpson state that romance novels paint true love, marriage, and children as the idealized end goal. And I absolutely agree that Christianity paints the concept of love in a very similar fashion, almost idealizing it as an end goal. In Genesis 2.18, it states, Then the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Saying that it's not good for humans to be alone and we should be in relationships. And even in 1 Corinthians 13, 13, it states, So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Saying that love is the most important thing. More important than even faith and hope. I would say that Christianity definitely agrees with cultural norms and the way that it speaks on love and marriage as an idealized end goal in a very similar way as romance novels paint love as an idealized end goal. One verse that pretty much sums up the way that love is viewed in the Bible is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 6, and it says, Love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. And I just love the way that the Bible explains love like that. So yes, I would agree that Christianity paints love and romance as this idealized end goal. However, I would say that the Bible talks about love in a very realistic manner. So the first three words of this quote I just read, love is patient. It doesn't say love is easy, anyone can have love, love is perfection. It says love is patient, which is true. On the other hand, however, I would say that Christianity 
also disagrees with cultural norms, especially from the sexual perspective, because hookup culture has become so normalized in today's society that people most of the time prioritize lust over true love. And the Bible even talks about these sexual immoralities as a really bad sin, saying how it's the only sin that is against one's own body. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5 states, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust. And I find that verse very interesting because in an article titled Romantic Love and Christianity, the author Shirley Robin Wetland states that lust is an aspiration after infinite perfection or the pursuit of an illusion that can never be satisfied in this life. However, love is the complete opposite. It's not a mere illusion, it's a very real thing. And individuals who find true love in this life are the ones that will ultimately be fulfilled. They will be fulfilled in their romantic relationships in a way that a lustful relationship could never fulfill them, ever. In 1 Corinthians 6, 15 through 20, it states, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Or do you know that he who is joined with a prostitute becomes one body with her? For as it is written, the two will become one flesh. And Christianity frowns upon the idea of the prostitute, saying that's a sin against one's own body and any type of sexual immorality. And that sexual relations are purely reserved for those in a marriage that are with the right reproductive organs. So in the way that Christianity views sex, I would say it definitely disagrees with a lot of cultural norms. Like I previously mentioned about hookup culture, it seems like today a lot of people are just looking for that instant gratification rather than putting in the time, like it said before, love is patient, and finding something that will truly fulfill them and not just satisfy them in that current moment. I would also say that many Christians don't believe that our society is in the post-feminist era. Like in post-feminist media culture, Elements of a Sensibility, the author Rosalind Gill states that post-feminism allows women to act freely because they've already been liberated. But this act of acting freely goes against a lot of the Christian values. I think that Christians are not exactly interested in the post-feminist era because they don't see women needing to be liberated from anything because the framework is based off of our innate biological differences, hence the domestic public dichotomy. For the discussion question, I want you to think about a romance-focused piece of media that you enjoy and how does it portray love, sex, and romance? And does it agree or disagree with Christian values and how?